Once again, everyone, it is 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm. I'm recording this video on Tuesday morning, the 20th day of December. Five days to go until Christmas and only a couple of days to go until a major winter storm impacts a lot of our local area and a lot of our region as well. And this will be a pretty serious situation for many, many places across the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley and eventually up into the Northeast as well. I wanted to start out this morning showing you where our system is now we have to go way out into western canada and we're looking at the kind of the upper level flow here and what will eventually become our blockbuster winter storm is kind of this colorful area right here you know to a, a non-meteorologist you may look at this and think what in the world am i looking at but this disturbance in the upper levels of the atmosphere that's pivoting down through british columbia right now will uh, gradually come down into the northern rockies and then eventually uh, this becomes right about here a couple days from now uh, by about uh, Wednesday night and Thursday morning this becomes a pretty blockbuster storm out here across the upper Midwest and this will then pivot through of course the uh, Great Lakes and eventually impact our area in a pretty serious way as we go towards the very end of the week so I put this online this morning just a recap of kind of uh, what we're thinking as far as the general timeline expecting a rapid freeze up Friday morning after some overnight rain uh, anything that's wet on the ground is going to freeze rapidly as we're going to drop from the upper 30s to the single digits in just a few hours basically um, and the wind chill of course will be much worse than that as far as snow Friday morning we're not looking at a whole lot um, I do think there will be some snow flying early in the day but it probably won't add up to a whole lot generally a couple of inches or less um, I don't think the snow totals will be very impressive at all, especially with this first round early Friday morning. But the bigger impacts will be the wind, the rapid freeze up, and the rapidly falling temperatures. Then we'll get into a little bit of a lull for a lot of the midday and afternoon on Friday, where it's going to be blustery and very cold. Uh, wind chills well below zero, but we won't see much snow falling during that time frame. Lunchtime Friday through at least early to mid-afternoon. By about dinner time Friday evening, once it gets dark, and as we head deeper into the evening especially, that's when conditions will really start to go downhill, and that's when I recommend travel uh, be avoided um, anytime after dark Friday evening and for a lot of Friday night. This is when wind gusts of 50 to 55 miles per hour will be pretty common, uh, perhaps even a little worse off to our north up closer to Cleveland and the lakeshore. Um, blizzard conditions possible um, here locally and throughout our region now. Uh, I talked about this yesterday, the uh, definition of a blizzard, three or more consecutive hours of sustained winds of 35 miles per hour or greater, and with visibility a quarter mile or less. We might have those conditions at times Friday night. As far as the snow totals, again, this is not going to be some sort of double-digit huge accumulation uh, for us, but it won't take a whole lot to cause a lot of problems. I think after seeing a couple of inches or less Friday morning, we'll see another handful of inches let's say um, Friday night we're not going to put out official numbers just yet but we're looking at probably another handful of inches worth of snow Friday night and it whatever falls is going to blow around there can be some drifts because of the winds and I am concerned about the power outage situation for Friday night with winds of 50 to 55 miles per hour and power outages would be really bad news considering how cold it's going to be uh, Saturday is kind of our transitional day. I think it'll be still pretty tough on the roads, especially in the morning. Um, conditions may slowly improve in the afternoon because in our local TV viewing area, I don't think we'll see much in the way of additional accumulations during the daylight hours on Saturday. There's going to be some flurries around. Maybe there's some small accumulations here and there, but the additional accumulation Saturday will be fairly confined to the lake effect areas because this will become more of a lake effect event by Saturday. So up towards Cleveland, especially the eastern suburbs of Cleveland, heading along I-90 over towards Ashtabula County up into Erie and Crawford County, PA, that's where the best chance for additional accumulations will occur during the daylight hours on Saturday. But the wind chills here locally stay below zero all day. Temperatures may not get out of the single digits on Saturday and it's going to be very cold into Christmas morning. So that's just kind of a, you know, the 30,000 foot view. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about some specifics. You know, I'm throwing around the, the word blizzard and it's possible, not guaranteed, but it's possible we'll experience true blizzard conditions Friday night. Whether we do or not, it doesn't really matter. Um, the, the impacts will be the same. But just for the record books, the last time the Cleveland National Weather Service office issued a blizzard warning 
3,645 days ago. This was just after Christmas in 2012, so almost exactly 10 years ago. The last time the Pittsburgh National Weather Service office issued a blizzard warning was 3,703 days ago. That was during uh, uh, Sandy at the end of October in uh, 2012, and it wasn't for the Pittsburgh area. This uh, the Pittsburgh Weather Service office covers some real mountainous terrain. Uh, down into the panhandle of Maryland and West Virginia. And uh, if you remember Sandy, which was kind of a, it was a hurricane at one point. It was questionable as to whether it was still a hurricane when it made landfall uh, around New York City. But either way, it actually produced some heavy amounts of snow in parts of the Appalachians. And so the Weather Service Office in Pittsburgh, that's the last time they issued a blizzard warning. I think it's possible that the Cleveland Weather Service Office will have to issue a blizzard warning for parts of their coverage area. Uh, for parts of Friday night. That includes maybe parts of our TV viewing area. They cover Trumbull and Mahoning counties in our television market, and it's possible that uh, they'll have to issue a blizzard warning. At the very least, a uh, high wind warning will probably be issued uh, for Friday night, and it will be under some sort of winter weather product, whether it be a winter storm warning or a uh, blizzard warning uh, as we go, uh, especially into Friday night. All right, so again, breaking down the timing of things, the first thing we'll see is rain. This is Thursday. Uh, the rain may freeze on a few surfaces for a brief time Thursday morning. I'm not real concerned about big impacts from that. A couple of hours to our east, this will be more problematic during the daylight hours on Thursday. So uh, east on I-80 um, during the daylight hours Thursday over towards Dubois, Clarion, Clearfield, uh, Belfont State College, also the PA Turnpike, Johnstown, over into the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, Thursday during the day could be a little bit tricky out there. In our TV viewing area, just a damp day for most of Thursday and into uh, Thursday night as well. The rain continues at night and here's the transition. We're gonna stop the clock here on this model at about daybreak Friday morning. Look at all the isobars, the black lines. Those are lines of equal pressure and when they're packed together, it's windy. Um, we've talked a lot about Friday night being the worst of the wind, but Friday morning, you know, don't sleep on this. Uh, it's gonna be windy at times Friday morning, no doubt. And we'll see a quick burst of snow. Now, again, the snow's not gonna add up to much Friday morning. Don't uh, set your expectations too high that you're going to get up Friday morning and look out the door and see a bunch of snow on the ground. Uh, this is probably a couple inches or less, but the impacts will be high because whatever falls is going to is going to stick. And below that small accumulation of snow is going to be a layer of ice probably because, again, after the rain at night, we're going to see temperatures crash by a good 30 to 35 degrees in a matter of a couple of hours. So that's Friday morning. And again, a midday afternoon break and then Friday night. This is, you know, if you've got to be out uh, running some pre-Christmas errands, doing anything on Friday, I recommend trying to do it if you can uh, early in the afternoon. Once we get past dark and into the evening and overnight, uh, snow showers coming and going. Look at all this wind with these isobars packed together like this. So uh, let's talk about the wind. We're looking at uh, on this model wind speeds at about 5,000 feet above our heads. This is Friday evening. Uh, this what we call a low-level jet. Uh, the jet stream we typically think of is up where the airplanes fly, 30,000 feet above our heads. But sometimes we get a, a river of fast-moving air down in the lower levels we call a low-level jet. And uh, at 7 o'clock or so Friday evening, we'll have one of these low-level jets. And I know you can't see the legend here, um, but this kind of white uh, area here with a little bit of uh, kind of pink embedded in that, that's a low-level jet of about 80 to 85 miles per hour, only about 5,000 feet above our heads. Some of that wind energy is gonna have no problem getting translated down to the surface of the earth where we are. And so uh, the wind situation I think will be, for a lot of us, what this storm will be remembered by. Um, it's probably not gonna be you know, memorable in terms of the amount of snow, um, but the wind, the wind chill, the threat for power outages, uh, the number one concern. So here's a look at some model wind speeds not above our heads, but down here where we live on the ground, you know, 50, 55, maybe even a 60 mile per hour gust here and there Friday evening. And, and there's gonna be some power outages. It's just a matter of how many and how severe and how long lasting they are. And uh, in addition to that, of course, the temperature crash. So we, we talked about this some yesterday. We're gonna go from the upper 30s at say 6 a.m. Friday to by lunchtime, here's 11 a.m., seven maybe. That's the air temperature, so you know the wind chill is gonna be quite a bit worse than that. The good news is in the longer range, hey, it's gonna warm up um, between Christmas and New Year's. Still bitterly cold Christmas day. Um, I would expect nothing more than a flurry or two on Christmas day, pretty benign day, just cold. Uh, temperatures in the teens, the wind will not be as much of a problem on Sunday. Um, and then we'll get above freezing by the middle of next week. And hey, look at this balmy stuff 
as we ring in 2023, highs in the upper 40s. So we're going into the deep freeze. It's going to be a severe Arctic outbreak and a very impactful winter storm, but it, uh, the worst of the weather will not be days and days. We're talking about a couple of pretty tough days uh, coming our way, and then things will be looking up as we ring in the new year. More from me on social media, of course, throughout the week, including a new video or two every day from here on out this week. Uh, a reminder, in case you haven't seen my videos, I'm actually on vacation this week. Um, and so I'm not on 21 News at 6 and 11. Meteorologist Andrew DePaulo has you covered there. But yeah, I'll be chiming in on, on all my social media outlets, including YouTube, throughout the week. Make it a great rest of your Tuesday.